guys, I have arrived here at the port here in Baltimore and I've checked in with the shipper. And I've been instructed to pull out onto this street and I've got to go down the road here a little ways and then turn in, scale in, get loaded, that sort of thing. I'm just waiting for this guy to get out of the way here. I'm probably getting a load similar to his. She said I was getting four coils. But the office I had to walk down to is a couple hundred yards down the street here. And there's a bunch of big uh, shipping uh, cargo ships or military ships or something here. Hopefully you'll be able to get a view of this. But the port... The, you know, you'll be able to see the waters right across the road here. Pretty cool. Hope you can see some of it. Anyway, I've got to get on this street, go down here a couple hundred yards, and then turn in. boats off to the left oh man I ain't gonna mess with the camera hope you can see some of it but I've got to make a right here where this green truck is coming out maybe you can see more of it as I leave this is where I'm supposed to turn in and then she said to turn around and get on the scale See how that's going to work. Uh, I don't. I don't guess it matters which one. <laughs> they all say wrong way. Do not enter. So what I'm supposed to do is flip around here, hop on a scale, go in and show the lady my paperwork, and find out where I'm loading, and uh, take it from there. So let me whip around here. Oh, they've got one of the scales blocked here, so that answers that question. Get on this one. All right. Get back to you in a minute. Can you see that ship straight ahead? That's a big one. USNS Gilliland, it says. All right, be back later. Okay, folks, had to check in again at a different office. And uh, had to show them a Twit card. And was instructed to come around this way. There's another ship. Boy, that one looks like it's seen better days. All right, so I'm supposed to go around this building. And somewhere back here, I hope I find building eight. Because <laughs> it looks like I'm about to run out of space. Okay, well. All I know is I'm getting four coils. 
I'm supposed to get loaded over here and secure them over here and then I go back over to the scale scale out and then go back to that lot I started out in to tarp then at some point if I get out of here I'm supposed to meet another Maverick driver somewhere down the road and swap this load for another one. So there's number eight. Let's see, where am I supposed to go? Okay. This is so, uh, all right. Let me get back to you in a minute. Okay, everybody. I've uh, gotten loaded. And uh, just wanted to show you real quick. I've got two chains on each coil, two coil racks. I had to put spacers because if I didn't, the coils would hit the bottom of the trailer. Got a skid mat underneath each coil, two chains. So that's it. Um, here's a look at the harbor, or whatever they call this. There's Baltimore over there. So, uh, all right, so what I'm supposed to do now is pull back around to the other side of the road and uh, scale out and uh, I then pull up to the other area where I started and get my paperwork and tarp just giving you a view of the harbor here in Baltimore some sort of a uh, memorial park over there with some cannons probably some kind of fort nice little boat there so Anyway, not something you see every day. All right, let me get moving. Hey folks, um, I'm here at a truck parking area slash way station about 20 miles south of uh, Washington, D.C. Picked up this load today up in Baltimore and my fleet manager has arranged for me to swap it with Steve. Hey, hey Steve. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Steve uh, lives in, you said Bristol? Bristol, Tennessee. Bristol, Tennessee, and he's been with Maverick for eight years? Uh, well, February made seven years, so I mean, I say going on eight years. A lot, but, quite a while, yeah. quite a while. I don't, uh, you know, I don't run into people that have been uh, with the same company for that long, usually. But uh, let's show you our loads real quick. This is the load I picked up, which I showed you before I tarped and uh this is the load that steve picked up which is now my load so it's a load of treated lumber oh well, it looks like the forklift driver speared that one yes sir that's exactly what i thought so pretty simple load here just a bunch of straps no tarps you know it's treated wood so no tarps it goes to a lowe's up in uh pennsylvania yeah uniontown pennsylvania uniontown pennsylvania i hadn't even looked that up to see where I'm headed really but it's near Pittsburgh right yeah it's a little southeast South of Pittsburgh okay so it should be over in that corner of the state yeah. so uh, what we've been doing for the last half hour is swapping over materials you know I had to give give him all of these straps because my load doesn't have any straps and he had to give me all of his binders and chains all of that because I used all of my chains and binders, all eight binders on this load, plus a bunch of padded edge protectors, skid mats, um, two canvas tarps, uh, eight coil racks, about 14 coil pads, I think we counted up. It was a lot of stuff. Yes, so uh, he moved a lot of equipment over. Took us, took us a while to get all that moved. I've still got edge protectors I need to put in my tarp box. That's where I keep most of them. So, um, now this load goes to North Carolina. Dunn, North Carolina. The one you're taking, which will kind of put you in position to get home, hopefully. That's right? right. That's yes, what sir. we're trying to do here. I'm still, uh, I told my wife I'm not really thinking I'll get home even Saturday. Maybe Sunday, you know, if they get me a load going through Little Rock, i I probably will have enough time I could get home Sunday because um, I didn't start this week until Tuesday. 
So it uh, depends on the, the load you pick up. It has to be tar, how much time you have to spend securing it, stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm not feeling real great about home time this weekend. <laughs> but, you know, I cannot really complain because as I've said in a lot of my videos, I've only been held out. You know, I've been doing this for over two years and I've only been held out, I think, three times. This would be my fourth. So we'll see how it goes. How, how now you mentioned when we were talking on the phone that you were in the USA division, but you're in the process of changing over to the. He just, he actually just transferred me over this week. To the Midwest? Regional Atlantic. Okay, Atlantic. So you'll be running up the Atlantic seaboard like we're doing today. <laughs> and, and sometimes I'll, I'll be like going into, you know, other people's zones too. Right. Depending on where the freight goes. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing, you know, today. This load here, I don't usually, you know, I, I've been in new territory for me today, you know, Baltimore, even that part of Pennsylvania, I've never been in. I've, I've only been over around Pittsburgh once. So I'm, I'm usually not in this part of the world. Never been through DC. So this is not the Midwest region. <laughs> No, that's but that's how it works sometimes. It's like a different planet when you come out here with all the traffic and yeah. all that going on. Yeah. So yeah, this is kind of a new experience and seeing some new territory, new country. That's cool. That's part of why I like this job. Um, so how long do you think it'll take you to get uh, the rest of your trip done to North Carolina? The way I figure it's going to be just a little under five hours getting down there. Okay. And. Uh, depending on where they send me uh, whether or not i get home tomorrow or early saturday maybe saturday yeah okay so that'll work for you either way um i think we calculated i've probably got a good five hours to get to to my delivery too and so. every every now and then i mean if you can get home but it's going to be saturday and you're not going to get a restart before you have to have the load to deliver it you can ask your fleet manager if there's any way they can change the uh, delivery time. Or right, delivery give you a later delivery day. time. That's true. They've I've, done that for me a few times. Yeah, I've done that a couple of times. So, um, do you, um, you, I think you mentioned that you're you're switching back to the regional instead of the USA to try to be home more. Yes, sir. So, were you, were you staying out uh, multiple weeks or? Usually, my game plan is I stay out two weeks at a time. Sometimes you three. have to when you're in the USA, in right? The USA, it's two weeks at a time, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sometimes three. Uh, right. It, you know, depending on what you got for a load, where it goes. But uh, you have to stay out at least two weeks yeah, if you're in the USA division. Yeah. Generally speaking, if my load doesn't get me home after two weeks, uh, I don't try to work out a load swap, and I just stay out another week and try to get that extra day off the next weekend. Gotcha. And, uh, so every, my understanding on that is every every week you stay out beyond two they give you an extra day off when you do get home well their, their uh, motto is they want to give you one day per week that you're out one day out. Okay. so like if okay. i'm out two weeks i'm supposed to get two, two full days. days at home sometimes it doesn't work out yeah. to get the two full days sometimes i barely get my 34 hour restart right right so, depends on the load but yeah i've learned to just kind of roll with it certain and, times of the year I, I volunteer to stay out longer like uh the last time i go home in october uh, once I come back out on the road, I'll stay out till Thanksgiving, and then uh, once I come back on the road after Thanksgiving break, I'll stay out till Christmas. Hmm. Okay. Because I know there's going to be some time off, and I don't right. want to have to use whatever vacation days I right. have left just for that. Kind of, you've learned when it kind of gets slow, and working around the holiday weeks. I'm still trying to get a good feel for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, now tell me where where Bristol is. I know I've seen signs for Bristol, but what's it close to? Bristol, Tennessee is really uh, part of what they call the Tri-Cities. You've got Johnson City, Kingsport, and Bristol. Uh, and it's on the Virginia-Tennessee state line. Okay, so kind of way up in the eastern, yeah, it's northeast, in northeast corner. corner of yeah, Tennessee. yeah. I delivered some pontoons up there uh, to a Bass Pro Shop. Geico actually came there and filmed the commercial one time with the little lizard standing on the Virginia side and the Tennessee ah, side and he called it Virginia The Geico lizard. Yeah, the Geico <laughs> lizard, yes sir. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, well let's see, is there anything else you wanna, any, any, since you've been driving for eight years for Maverick, any words of wisdom to new Maverick drivers out there that just started or going through training or thinking about coming? Well, I mean, uh, utilize 
whatever help that your company makes available, uh, whether that be secure my hotline numbers or uh, macros that you can send in to give you local directions to get in and out of somewhere. Uh, and even now, a lot of guys that's been here as long as I have will skip sending in the macros for the local directions, but I do it anyway because sometimes those change. Right. And there may be something in there that's new and updated you need to know. So like if you notice the directions need to be updated, send that form in so sure. that it gets reset you, for the next guy right and you can actually send a message to your fleet manager right and giving him the updated directions right. and telling him what customer that's to and he, he can get that change in the system yeah the next driver i've done that i think maybe once but uh today you know i made a delivery uh to a job site you know i had some insulated uh panels you know for a, a cold cold storage kind of a place and uh they were the shipper had told me when I left there that they had 15 loads going to that one place. So when I got there today, there was me and one other truck there, not a Maverick. And I guess we were the first ones there. But the, the, the building supervisor or whatever his title is, um, after we got unloaded, he said, you know, uh, are there any more of you guys coming today? And I was like, man, I, I would guess yes, but I don't know that um because he wasn't expecting anything to show up till tomorrow was, was kind of throwing him off so he he wrote down his name and number and asked me to uh if i could communicate that to the office and uh forward it to all the other drivers that were on the way and ask them to call him directly so they could work out you know an eta because he said you know I, i'm not here all the time i have to drive here with somebody to help me unload these. So I kind of need to know. It would help me and your driver if um, we kind of work together on this. I said, absolutely. So I sent the email in to Paul. You said Paul's your fleet manager too? So sent that in to Paul and he said he could forward it to everybody. So yeah, good communication helps everybody. So and also like a, one thing I did learn too, when you deliver to job sites, make sure you always call the job supervisor before you get there, like a day before. Uh, and ask him if there's anything you need to know make sure that the roads that you're thinking about going down is going to be okay that's right that's a very good advice because i've had a few job sites and they've thought that they've had it set up for trucks to be able to get in and out and mm -hmm. they've had to end up removing the fence after we got there because they didn't have enough room yeah so. yeah there's always something tricky with a job site delivery sometimes they want you at a different place or Heck, I've even been out in a cow pasture before unloading uh, water pipes. So you never know what you're getting into with a job site. So good advice. Call ahead, guys. Call the number on your paperwork and just confirm everything. The address could be different. They're not expecting you. You're dealing with multiple people. Yeah, just call ahead. Okay, so we're going to call it a night. We're, again, we're at this little rest area slash way station. Uh, and Steve here did us did us a great service. He used his experience with this area, since I didn't have any in this area, and he kind of picked out this area and uh, guided me in, in here. He got here well before I did, and he kind of coached me in, told me what, what to look for, and gave me some traffic advice on getting around DC. So it worked out great. Thank you for doing that, Steve. That's what we're here for and uh we you know we had to swap trailers so what he did is he parked here dropped the trailer or this trailer dropped the trailer and then parked his truck over here to save me a spot and then i called him when i was a couple of miles up the road and uh as soon as i pulled up right here he moved out of the way so i could pull in and then we started doing our swap so that worked really good Thank you again, Steve. Because <laughs> if I'd have been left to figure that out on my own without your knowledge, no telling where I would have ended up trying to stop, you know, looking for a pilot somewhere. It's just one of those things uh, when I first started, I wish I would have had people that would have done that for me. Yes, so, yes. So I try to do that anytime I can. Yeah, well, us, us newer guys need you experienced guys helping us out, even though we don't want to admit it. <laughs> okay, Steve, well, let's get some sleep. What do you say? All right, guys. Uh, see you tomorrow.